Hey cats, it's Ed, Endorphin Bud here. Today I have for you a 100 mile review of a smashing shoe. You could say it's the Liberace of marathon running shoes. The Sock Oni Endorphin Pro 3. That is how it's pronounced apparently, so just think before you comment. Just as sparkly as my initial review? Maybe even more? Let's do it. Welcome footwear fanatics. I can't but express extensive elation towards you. I do appreciate you tuning into the channel. There are some things that you can do to help spread the good word. Hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications when I launch the new videos for you. Also give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. If you've got a specific question that you want to get straight to the mind of Ed Bud, then do give us a super thanks down below. It helps to keep replenishing the shoe supply. 100 miles or 160 kilometers down in the Socony Endorphin Pro 3. This is a shoe that Socony sent to me for review, but they're not paying me to make this video, nor will they vet my views before my valued viewers. We'll kick it off with the upper first. So upwise, it's been a bit of a banger for me, this one. The odd tongue slip issue seemed to disappear. I did use a slightly thicker sock with this shoe that seemed to give me a better fit. It's one of those Adidas sort of thicker padded race socks that you can find on their website. Easily available. The fishnet style upper is very fitting, though an odd and rather unconventional design. It simply works for me and the balance of materials across the upper on this shoe are second to none. All the right things in the right places in the right amounts. I think the tongue with its Virgil Abloh style cutouts is an awesome winner for me. Can you imagine the design meeting that they must have had when they came up with that idea? How can we make the Endorphin Pro 3 even lighter, Bill? How about we actually chop bits out, Steve, that don't actually make contact with the runner's foot? It simply works, guys, and I bet more running brands do it in the future. Now, if you really hate the fact that the upper on a shoe sometimes will kind of close in around your foot and it will look a bit weird, you might get that if you have a narrow foot with the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. You'll get the Tim Gross effect where you've got a pull the upper in quite considerably and it may even almost meet in the middle. It may be that you just simply don't care about that and if so, good on you. I don't really miss a more substantial heel counter in this shoe, it's simply like a, a strut I suppose which just runs up the back towards the Achilles. Amongst all the uppers in the world it's a bit of a maverick this shoe, it stands out on its own, there's no offset lacing or super elastic laces here. Only the minimum of supporting features around the foot. I don't really find the ankle section of the Endorphin Pro 3 a problem. Some people mentioned in the Speed 3 that it crept up a little bit too high on their Achilles. Well, I haven't felt that at all over the 100 miles. Lockdown, easily achieved. I have opted for a runner's knot every single run and that's given me a nice consistent fit. No messing around. Strangely good in wet conditions as well. It's probably because it's like a fishing net. I mean, the last few weeks have been a real torture test for this upper and my feet have always remained reasonably dry and warm. Well, as much as they can be when there's torrential rain. Just a little bit perplexing. I'm not entirely sure how it does it, but it works. It's still a three out of three for the upper for me after a hundred miles. Enjoyable even in those very damp, moist conditions. Midsole now. I found this shoe to be very special for me at least. Around tempo speed, seven minutes, 30 seconds per mile. Up to about half marathon target pace, which is six minutes 50 for me. So that's about four minutes 40 through to about four minutes 15 per kilometer. At marathon speed, it's nice and smooth. It's consistent. I don't find it to be overtly squashy in the heel. The midsole material has held up very well, aside from some slight abrasion on the lateral side of the heel. If you've not run in a P-back space midsole before, then yes, it's going to crease up, but I feel this one's actually got a slight edge in terms of durability over some of the other models. It's looking great still and feels great too. In all honesty, the propulsive nature of the Power Run PB midsole material here could be down to the actual pellet form that's used. It's not just straight out P-backs, it's kind of this crushed up pellet stuff they kind of mash together. I think it expands the durability and the longevity of the actual features that it provides. In a strange way, this shoe has actually reminded me of the original Endorphin Speed. That was one that stood out on its own. It was a real unicorn of a shoe. Similar rolling action and that propulsive feel. 
just fun and engaging to run in. The expanded width in the mid to forefoot area is a real winner here, making the shoe a true marathon super shoe to contend and compete with the Vaporfly Next% 2, where their Metaspeed Sky Plus feels a bit more like a 10k shoe to me, perhaps through to the half marathon as well. The very cushioned Endorphin Pro 3 feels like you could run practically any distance in it. It does feel like a big evolution here now I've hit 100 miles between this and the V1 and the V2. I think with the upper improved you actually benefit from a better connection to the midsole. And there's no nasty arch here to put you off. I do think the extra PBAX insole that Saucony have put into the Endorphin Pro 3 makes a big difference. It's a bonus and it moves the shoe a little bit above the Adios Pro 3 for me. I think this one's right up there now in terms of midsole with the Vaporfly next position. To. I'm going to stand by my 3 out of 3 score for the midsole that I gave it on my initial review. The midsole's holding up really well so far. Outsole now. Outsole wise we have a big improvement here and I've been torture testing this one. I've been going through the sludge on my local routes and it's performed fantastically well. Leaves, mud, standing water, even acorn shells. All conditions, the Endorphin Pro 3 has come through. Whereas the previous versions really suffered in terms of outsole, that was the Achilles heel. No such issues here. It is a little bit loud. You get this rather strange squelching sort of sound. I believe that's probably from this void here. But grip's been spot on, no slipping or sliding around out there. No tentative foot strikes either. Don't you just hate those? The very direction of the lugs on the mid to forefoot and the diagonal longer slats in the heel really work well and elevate the Endorphin Pro 3 above some of the other models. I got a tiny bit of wear on the lateral side of the heel here, probably where I got a little sloppy. And we got some discoloration of the exposed foam here, but what do you expect? I've been trudging through a load of sludge. But it's still looking really good there. There's no degradation of the foam or anything. It feels fantastic. On road, these certainly shine, but I feel they're a little bit more versatile now. You can utilize them on some other stuff too. I'm going to go with an outsole score of 2.9 out of 3 it's pretty much perfection only lowered by a little bit of wear there in the lateral heel only on the rubber though i mean there's still some grip there value now can't get away from it the retail cost of this one at 210 earth credits here in the uk is pretty high i guess it's competitive though when you think about the vaporfly next percent too i think this iteration of the endorphin pro is right up there i believe other manufacturers have caught up a little bit with nike now they've kind of rested on their laurels and everyone else has been catching them up and i think Saucony know this hence the price of the endorphin pro 3 Though I did notice there's a couple of websites I have it for 180 right now. It's a little bit more teasing, isn't it, of a price? Certainly more stable than the Vaporfly Next% 2. There's a little bit more width there in the heel. That could provide you with a little bit more versatility. And I think you've got a slightly more durable shoe here with the Saucony. I think Super Shoes have evolved somewhat since they first appeared, you know, around 2018, 2019. And the Endorphin Pro line is one that has continually updated and changed over that time. I think if the Vaporfly doesn't work for you, then this should be your first port of call. If you perhaps found the Metaspeed Sky Plus to be a little bit too firm, or the Adios Pro 3 just hasn't got that upper lockdown that you desire, this is your shoe. And I can heartily recommend it from a quality perspective as well. It's a really rocking shoe straight out of the box. I'm going to give it a 2.8 for value after 100 miles, only lowered by perhaps that eye-watering retail price. See if you can get a discount on this one. You've only got the Vaporfly, the Alpha Fly, and the Primex higher than this really. A high score for a high quality shoe. This gets the beast seal of approval. If I've totaled the scores up correctly, that gives us 11.7 out of 12 on the highest scores I've ever given for a shoe on the channel. Viewers, how is the Endorphin Pro 3 holding up for you? Is it one that's on your must-get list? Did it just not work out? Let me know down in the comments. A musical interlude for you. I think I've covered this one in the past, but I've recently gone back to it because I got a vinyl copy and it sounds majestic. I'm talking about Ben Folds here with his album So There. Now the bits to check out are the concerto for piano and orchestra parts one through to three. They feature bits of all the other tracks on the album, so it's kind of like instrumental versions of the actual songs and things that appear on the other part. There's some beautiful strings here, real emotional stuff, quite stirring. 
I found it really great on a long run actually, helped to keep me nice and calm. Kind of fills you with all sorts of emotions as you listen through each of the movements. I believe this was done with the Nashville Symphony Orchestra. It really is fantastic, definitely worth checking out if you can track it down. Ben Folds with So There. Thanks for tuning in people, always appreciated. Hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications. Give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.